sound like i sound like i'm about to drop a, a couple bars there hey uh everybody what's going on uh good afternoon to people on the midwest and on the east coast good morning to people on the west coast and uh good morning good afternoon and good evening to, to everyone else around the world how's it going guys this is hashtag tnt joe fi uh tech news that jerome ortega finds interesting this is episode something something uh i don't know and then this is uh day number something something in quarantine because it's it's been too long now and uh i just I just want to go out and do stuff, but that's not going to be happening probably anytime soon, which is unfortunate, but what are you going to do? Anyway, guys, uh, hey, how's it going? Um, I got a couple of things in the news today. I don't know if there's a ton of stuff to go through, but we're going to go through it. And then, uh, you know, we'll talk and chat if there's anything else that you guys, uh, you know, can think of that's going on. Uh, feel free to drop it in there. Um, and if chat's not too crazy, <laughs> Hopefully I can go through everything, but, um, yeah, guys, how's it going? Um, let me, let me think about how I want to start this off. Uh, let me go through chat first. I'll just say hi to everybody. Uh, I think I already said hi to, to everyone that's in here. Um, Levin, uh, started off. What's, what's people looking to hear about that Poco phone F2? We'll see. We'll talk about it. Um, I was actually really surprised to see the price drop, uh, on it, not not the price dropping, but the fact that the the price that they listed it at, I thought it was actually going to be priced more because the Redmi K30 Pro I think was pricing at seven hundred, I think. So for this to get priced at what it's at, um, I was pretty happy to see. Uh, I see uh, Tobes uh, Nwajagu in here. Uh, what up, guys? Uh, Tobes also said it's about it's all about the LG wing. I think Tobes is a big LG fan, um, right? Am I am I right in saying that? Because you talked about the Velvet for a while. Um, the LG Wing is something that kind of came on my radar when I was going through some of the news. But uh, we'll we'll go through that too. Uh, Brian's in here as well. What up, everyone? What up, Brian? How's it going, man? Glad to have you on the stream. Um, okay, guys. So let, let's uh, let's start off. And uh, actually, what I want to how I want to segue into this um, 
Poco F2 Pro is, uh, I want to talk about the video that I posted yesterday. And um, so yesterday, I cut a clip of yesterday's stream and I, I said, you know, Google put the new Snapdragon 768G in the Pixel 5 if you're not going to use the 865, please. That's that's how I, I framed it, right? Um, and, and pretty much what I was saying is if the Pixel 5 is going to use the Snapdragon 765 uh, or if they're planning on using a Snapdragon 700 series chipset to put uh, the 768G in there instead of putting the 765G. And, you know, I I typically don't go through comments. I've just been too busy to really go through them and, um, you know, kind of see what's going on in them. But uh, somebody, I, I ended up going through it yesterday real quick. And someone, someone commented here, y'all expect too much at this point. Y'all want the best chipset, but low price. That just isn't how it works. And I think when somebody, when somebody talks that way, that's a, uh, that that that's being a defeatist um there there shouldn't be we shouldn't just succumb to whatever prices manufacturers put on the phones for us um expecting too much okay let, let, let's talk about let's talk about expecting too much when when the pixel 4 came out at, at 800 dollars, was that expecting too much were we supposed to be like yeah 800 dollars is fair that's a fair price and then a couple months later they dropped the price what uh you want the best chipset but low price the pixel 4 is $500 right now that's what what is there what is there there's no justification there they just dropped it $300 they they probably could have done that from the start and they wouldn't have had as much flack as they have you know since then look at the Samsung Galaxy Ultra right Look at that fourteen hundred dollar price tag, and now they're they're committing to give you to give you half of your money back if you pay for it. They they say send us the phone back in two years, and we'll give you half of your money back. I, I just I don't I don't think that any of us should just sit down and take whatever price they give us. I think there is there, there is a right that we have to bitch about a price if we think if we think it's too expensive. Wh why can't why can't we say that? And and why can't we fight for for these companies to give us better prices? I don't know. Not everyone has a ton of money, and I, you know, if something's overpriced, I'm going to call it like I see it. Uh, and you know, and and he said there too, you want the best chipset. Well, the 765G isn't the best chipset. The 768G just that just got announced is not the best chipset. That's the 865, right? And again, I'm talking about where you, you want to talk about the Pixel 4 using the Snapdragon 855 that was priced at 800 and now is selling for 500 bucks. No. Um, so he he commented and said, you said you haven't experienced the phone with a 765. It's going to be mid range. You're just setting yourself up for disappointment because they have a final design by now. OK, I mean, he, here's the thing is <laughs> I. What, what what I'm going to say again is like, I'm not just going to bow down and be like, yeah, fair price. It is what it is. What are you going to do? You know, companies can do whatever they want here. Let me just bend over, you know, let get, 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 you know, go in raw. <laughs> like, no guys, that's not that, that isn't, we, we should, we should fight with our wallets. We should fight with, with our, sorry, my phone's going off and I'm, I'm about to put that on do not disturb. Um, yeah. So, uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> and, and that's the thing, the, the continuation here is, is let them take a down year, let them take a down year. Are you kidding me? How many down years does Google need and, and let them develop their own chips and maybe hopefully the pixel six will have a custom Google chip. Um, I, I don't, I don't like that kind of attitude. That's not, it's pretty much you're you're pretty much telling people well you know when somebody is in the market for a phone in in late 2020 you know you're gonna let them buy an inferior product because you want a company to take a down year fuck you like these are these are companies that are making billions of dollars a year like that isn't that's not how you fight for your wallet it isn't like i and and it's nothing against this guy i'm just saying like we, we should be fighting for we should be fighting for our dollar here. Like we earn our money, like, and, and people like me want to help people buy the right product. And so the reason I'm talking about this, the reason I'm, I'm even bringing any of this up is because I thought this comment was a perfect segue, a perfect segue to 
the announcement today for the Poco F2 Pro. And yeah, so the, the, you want <laughs> when somebody when somebody says something like y'all expect too much at this point, here comes Poco with their F2 Pro that that's selling a Snapdragon 865. The 865 that they're putting that they're pricing $1400 on the the Galaxy S20 Ultra. The the 865 that they're pricing for $900 on the OnePlus 8 Pro. This is selling for $500. Yes, they're, they're not. They're, the Poco F2 Pro is nowhere in, on the same level as an S20 Ultra, not on the same level as a, one, uh, a OnePlus 8 Pro, but you're, you're still getting a high-end chipset here with some high-end specs. And I think this is a pretty fair price. Don't you think? Um, when when uh when a Snapdragon 700 series like the Velvet is pricing at $700, now now this $499 price point kind of makes you go, well, I'm not understanding. There, there, there's something there's something to be said about that, and and for us to just glean glean it over like it's no big deal. Ah, let them price whatever they want to price the phones at. No, no. Okay. So that long that long story was just to get into this segue, but I think. I think it was appropriate. I think, you know, it's it's important to to kind of justify how we spend our money. So this article from Engadget is talking about the F2 Pro being a high-end all-screen phone for $499. If you see right here, it has a pop-up. It has a it has a pop-up selfie cam. And it, it makes me happy to see that. Uh no notch, no bezels, no, no hole punch. Um, it's looking pretty good. So uh, earlier this year, Xiaomi decided to spin off its sub-brand that created the Pocophone F1. Now known as Poco, the company has announced its latest phone, the F2 Pro. And like its predecessor, it features flagship specs and a slick design. With a 6.67-inch AMOLED notchless display, a Snap 865 processor, and liquid cooling, the phone is positioned to compete against the likes of flagship models like the OnePlus 8 series. The F2 Pro might look familiar, that's because it's actually the international version of Xiaomi's Redmi K30 Pro. Both models are equipped with so LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 flash storage, so top of the line. Uh, Poco says that this combo decreases load times and enables quicker multitasking. The Snap 865, which is the same chip used in Samsung's Galaxy S20 series, helps to process more advanced photos and footage. The F2 Pro is capable of detailed macro shots, low light photos, and 8K video. So very high end specs. The notchless design precludes a front facing camera, but the F2 Pro has a pop up camera, which can shoot slow-mo selfies at 120 frames per second. These specs are exciting. The phone itself looks like a premium device and the 499 euro about four five hundred and forty dollar price makes the poco f2 sound like a lot of bang for the buck so i see 540 so i didn't watch the um the unveiling uh i don't know if it was earlier this morning or last night but i i was sleeping <laughs> i think i woke up today at like 10 15 in the morning um but uh the phone will be available later today from the retailers like gearbest so i heard that the 499 uh, US dollar price point is an introductory price point, I think. Um, but I have to double check on that and we'll hopefully be on Amazon soon. If the specs and the warm reception of the Pocophone F1 are anything to go on, the Poco F2 Pro could be a hit. So when the Poco F1 came out, that phone came out with a Snapdragon 800 chips. Uh, was it the 855? No. 845, whatever it was, but that priced at 299. So this one is saying 499, which is still a really good price, especially in today's market. And uh, so I opened GearBest's um, website here. So this is saying 499 US. Again, I have to look at the actual details of uh, what the prices are going to be. And I think the 499 price point is for. Um, 64 gigs of internal storage. And I don't think it's UFS 3.1. I think, I don't know if it's UFS 3.0, but I have to, again, I, I haven't had all the time this morning and this afternoon to really go through it, but we're, we're going through it now. So snap 865 with, uh, like a liquid cooling technology, 
uh, 6.67 inch AMOLED. Um, so it's an FHD display. You're not getting quad HD. You're not getting 90 Hertz refresh rate or 120 Hertz. This is your 60 Hertz refresh rate. Uh, it has quad cameras. Uh, it has four cameras in the back, um, 8k video, and it has a front, uh, a selfie pop-up camera, which is really exciting for me. I, I kind of want this phone just to, to test it out um, because it also has a full screen and it has a 4,700 milliamp hour battery with 30 watt fast charging. So there's no wireless charging in it. So those are, those are some of the caveats, right? Again, it's not going to have every single feature on this phone, but it's going to have a good amount for people who are looking for high performance, uh, a lot of storage or at least a decent amount of storage. So let's kind of scroll down and see what else that they have here. So it's equipped, you know, with LPDDR5 and UFS 3.1. And you see there's an asterisk here because I think you have to buy the higher end version for that. Um, liquid cool technology. Okay, so Wi-Fi 6, 5G. And then again, a huge battery. 4,700 milliamp hours is a huge battery. Uh, I'm wondering how good that battery life is going to be since it's only going to have a 1080, uh, you know, FHD display. Um, sorry, I'm just looking to see what else I'm missing. You know, four cameras, uh, a 64 megapixel main camera, and then a 13 megapixel ultra wide, a five megapixel uh, telemac telemacro, telephoto, I guess a telephoto and a macro, right? I think. And then a depth sensor. Um, okay, so slow motion video on the front. And then uh, let me, I just wanna see what the pricing details are for it. So it's, again, it's not bad. I just don't know how I'm gonna be able to get this in the States. Do I not see the other versions in here? Because then I think um, if you want, oh, so it, I don't know if it's available to buy just now. And I don't know if you can sign up for it. But I think if you want the high-end version, which is I think the eight gigs of DDR5 with 256 gigs of storage, then I think that's the $650 price point, which still doesn't sound awful at all. $650 for a flagship phone is what phones used to be priced at back in like 20, 2014, 2015, somewhere around then. So anyway, um, yeah, it's not bad. I, I kind of want to get it. <laughs> I got to see if I have the funds for it, but, uh, we'll see. So let me, let me go back into chat here. That's, that's kind of how I want to cover it. Um, Oh, I see a super chat. Brian in here with the dollar super chat. Brian, thank you so much. Thank you for the continued streak of super chats. Uh, this is number 30 something. I still have to double check and see. Brian, thank you so much for the support. Appreciate the support, man. Um, and to everyone else, uh, thank, thank you guys for dropping in the chat. Thank you for joining the stream. Um, I, I do want to give a lot of shout or I want to do give a lot of I do want to give thanks to Brian though. Brian's been a very continued supporter. Uh, he, he's, he's very engaging in chat. Uh, he's a great moderator too. So Brian, thank you so much. Okay. Let me scroll up here, guys. Let me, let me see what else is going on. Um, who have I not said hi to? I see Hamed in here. Hamed Al Shamzi. Hey guys. Hey Hamed. How's it going, man? Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you. Um, let me see here. Uh, who am I missing? <laughs> <laughs> uh will's in here too updates don't matter what's up everyone what's up will welcome to the stream man welcome to the chat how you doing uh glad to see you here hopkins uh in here as well hey hopkins how's it going man exactly we should not accept everything we get on the table because we will find uh that prices will skyrocket exactly man i just i just don't think we should just bend over get on our knees bow down and say yes you know price it whatever you want because um you know, we're not going to complain. Like, no, that's not how things should be. Uh, and, and actually I have something that I'll add on to that, uh, in, in just a second here. Um, okay. So let me see here. Let me scroll down. I see Javier in here too. Javier Hidalgo got to look at the Maizu 17 pro. Also, I did talk about the Maizu 17. Was it a day or two ago? I can't remember. And I already forgot about the specs on that, but, um, I don't even know if I can buy that phone here in the States, but I think that Maizu 17 was really cheap, wasn't it? I think it was. Um, I'll have to look. Uh, Jerome, the problem with the Poco F2 Pro is that you can get OnePlus 7 Pro for that price, and I would choose OnePlus any day because of software. That's a great point. 
Um, the OnePlus 7 Pro, though, is using, well, I, I guess the only difference there, right, is it's using um, an older Snapdragon chipset, right? Uh, 855, is it 855 plus, 845? I don't remember. Um, but the, I think the only other problem with the OnePlus 7 Pro is how how readily how readily available is it to get <clears throat> sorry excuse me how readily available is it to get today like can i easily go and get one um i i totally agree with you though especially because of the software <laughs> like i have no idea how how this poco what is it poco um poco launcher or whatever i i, I mean how i would how i would mess with it is i would probably end up modding it right uh, when lineage or whatever comes out and you're able to, to, to ROM it, um, with something different, that's probably how I do it, but I hear you. I totally hear you. Um, I'm curious though, how easy it is to get a one plus seven pro now, um, or what those even price at. So, um, okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Brian says here, possible Poco fund. Maybe, maybe Brian, that's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. I see Jason in here too. What's up? Uh, what's good? Uh, what's good? Jerome and stream. What's good, Jason. How's it going, man? Uh, glad to see you again. Glad you can make it. Appreciate you stopping by. Um, okay. Uh, let me see here. Sorry guys. Just scrolling down. Just making sure I, I, I say what's up to everyone. I see Grant in here too. Uh, Hey Grant, what's going on, man? Uh, glad you can make it again. Nice to see you. Uh, Sean in here too. What up, Jerome? What up, Sean? Nice to see you, man. Glad you guys are making it all to the stream. Uh, Sean says, smash the like and subscribe. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate that. Uh, appreciate that support. Really do. It means a lot to me, man. Uh, Hopkins says, uh, yeah, 855 and the OnePlus 7 Pro, and that's perfectly fine. It is. I'm sure most people aren't even going to tell the difference between an 855 and an 865, especially, you know, um, like I've said, 5G isn't the, the greatest thing in the world right now. But again, to see, you know, to see a Poco F2 Pro uh, undercut everybody right now is nice. I, I'm glad that, you know, they're doing what they need to do. Um, and maybe these are going to be the guys that are going to replace OnePlus. Maybe. I mean, don't, don't quote me on that. But for them to at least put something out at a much cheaper price point and say, hey, like the phones don't have to be priced, you know, the way that these other companies are doing it, it's it's at least nice to see. Um, okay, so let me see here. Uh, Levin saying uh, Pogo Launcher is pretty much stock. I'll have to I'll have to check that out. Um, yeah, I just wonder how I wonder how good, or I wonder how easy it is to use in the states, or if it's going to be difficult. Like, what kind of bands are going to be on here? And I see Will saying that too. Check the band. So yeah, that's that's a good point. Big House in here too. Uh, Big House Productions. Hey, everyone. Hey, Big House. Welcome. Welcome, man. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the chat. Glad you can make it. Okay, guys, let's move on. Let's get on to the next story here. And uh, <laughs> so here we go. I, I This is this is also me um, kind of continuing about how we shouldn't just let companies uh, just do whatever they feel that they can. And uh, <laughs> I gave so much shit to this phone when it came out. And uh, I still think deservedly so. And and I still think I, I should continue to bash on them today um, because the Motorola Edge Plus, which is selling for a thousand bucks, you can't even get this phone anywhere else except for Verizon. It's a Verizon exclusive. And, uh, you know, Verizon goes ahead and they, they, they get to put their logo on it 12 times on the front and then 18 times on the back and then add bloatware. And uh, this is a phone that I do not recommend to anyone. I still I still wouldn't recommend it to anyone. I mean, it seems like it has really high end specs and cool features. I just don't really believe in buying phones that you're stuck to a carrier with. Uh, and I really don't like the carrier exclusives. I think that's kind of... Um, I don't know. I, I, I think at least for me, you, I just don't like the exclusivity to it. Um, and then you're, you're, you're bowing down to a major telecom and you're, you're doing their bidding and you're letting them put bloatware on it. And then you're letting them fuck up your phones. That That's how I feel about it. I mean, if you guys buy carrier phones, I, you know, you all have your reasons. I just, I, I take a stance differently on it. So here's the thing. Uh, the one thing that I didn't point out in everything else I was talking about this Motorola Edge Plus was the fact that um, <laughs> this phone was only supposed to get one major Android update, just one. So when uh, the 
the Google Pixel when the Google Pixel gives you three and Samsung gives you two and and Samsung gets a lot of shit for only getting two. Um, <laughs> the Motorola Edge Plus said we're going to give you one major update and then that's it. And then uh, you can uh, you can buy a new you can buy another phone or just keep your your old outdated phone for however long uh, you want. But we're only going to update it for a year and uh, you know you're lucky if you do. Well, they're changing their stance on that. So. Uh, the Android world as a whole has been getting a bit better when it comes to software updates over the past few years, but there have been a few standouts. Motorola, for example, has a dreadful update policy. Now for its flagship Motorola Edge Plus, the company is promising more than one, one Android update. And by more than one, now they're going to give you two. They're going to go the Samsung right. Uh, Samsung route, and they're going to give you two updates. When it launched last month, Motorola only promised a single major update for its new flagship phone that <laughs> it's asking customers to pay $1,000 for. It's just so funny to me because can you imagine buying a phone for a thousand bucks and knowing that they're only going to promise you a year of updates for it? Plus you get to see the Verizon logo 17 times on your phone. Like, that you can only use on Verizon. And if you sell it to anyone, it will only be usable on Verizon and nowhere else. Like, no, why? You're going to have bloatware on there that you can't take out. I just, I don't think it's a good deal at all. That means that if you purchase the device at launch later this month, it would end up outdated by the time Android 12 rolled around in 2021. That's sad. That's, I'm just reading that. That's not me saying it. That's what the article's saying, although I agree. Now Motorola is going back on that decision. Speaking to Android Central, Motorola confirmed that the Edge Plus would get two major software updates, bringing the device at least to Android 12. The company has not, however, promised, uh, provided any promises in terms of how timely that update will arrive. So even if they promise you two years, they promise you two years, it doesn't mean you're gonna get that second or even that first update when the Google Pixel does. So when the Google Pixel goes ahead and they launch Android 11, that doesn't mean the Motorola Edge is going to get Android 11 the same time the Google Pixel will. Let's get that straight. Like understand that when you buy phones that aren't Pixels. Um, Samsung's been really good about their updates lately and I'm very thankful for that, but that doesn't mean they're going to be timely forever. It doesn't mean they're going to be timely forever. And if they if they do, good. Good for them. They should be. All companies should be up to date, getting their shit ready for every update that comes out. But <laughs> Motorola hasn't had the best track record. Uh, other companies haven't either. LG hasn't. And um, when 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 companies aren't giving you their their most stock version or whatever, and I don't know how much change with Motorola. I still think a lot of it is stock. But don't be surprised if they don't update their shit, especially if it's especially if you have to wait a month or two months or three months for the next update. Um, given how long it's take for, given how long it's taken for Android 10 to arrive on the $1,500 Motorola Razor, <laughs> things aren't looking great. Wait a minute. So I, I've never owned a Razor. I've never messed with a Razor. Uh, I, I, because one, I wouldn't buy $1,500. I wouldn't spend $1,500 for a phone that doesn't even have high end specs, except for the fact that it's a foldable. Yes. It's cool to see foldable phones, but, um, I'm not, I like, it's not a big deal to me. I don't need a foldable. Uh, but so the Motorola Razor is running on Android nine. When is it supposed to get Android 10? You, you paid $1,500 for that phone. And is it going to get Android 10? I'm guessing it's gonna, but, um, how long has that been out now? And there's no update for it. So it's a big deal here. After all, almost no average consumer walks into a carrier store and purchases a phone thinking, wow, this is going to get updates for years. That's a very valid point. Most people who buy phones, um, they're not, they might not care about it. They might not question it. But I think a big thing about that is there's security that's on the line there. And, um, I think if anything, it's important that people should understand that updates are important. Uh, the problem with Motorola only promising a single update is that it's cheating its customers out of deserved value. When a Pixel gets three major updates at least and a Samsung device gets two, there's no justification for Motorola stopping at one for a phone of the same, if not higher price point. And um, yeah, there's a lot of sense that could be made and there are cases that could be made on both sides that says, yeah, most people don't care, but um, just because they don't care doesn't mean that they shouldn't get those updates. It doesn't mean that updating a phone to provide the best out of it 
over those years that it shouldn't get that support. Like that doesn't make any sense. Like, I, I think we're at a time now where you can push updates to a certain device. It's not like back in the day when you would have like the original Nintendo that can't get an update because there's no online capability, right? You know, you'd just have to end up buying new hardware. Times aren't like that anymore. Like if, if, if there, if a company can still support a product and keep continuing to make it better and give it some longevity over the years so that you develop a brand loyalty to, to them, why not? Why, why is everything a throwaway uh, society today? It really shouldn't be. I, you know, I, the, people can have a, uh, opinions on that. And I, I totally, <laughs> I totally understand, but, um, I still think again, as a consumer, we, we should have some, we should have some say, and there should be some rights about like how our money is spent. And, and I guess at the end of the day, if you don't like it, then you don't have to, you know, you don't have to spend the money. If, if you don't like it, don't buy it. And people can tell me that too. <laughs> you want to know the truth? That's why I don't buy it. But it doesn't mean I can't sit here and and I can't complain and be like, hey, this is why I'm not buying your shit. I'm not buying it because of this, 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 and that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I think that's important that I sit here and I get on my pedestal or my soapbox and I preach that to people who don't know that. Uh, kudos, Motorola. You made a wise decision. The one caveat, though, <laughs> is that we don't know if this applies to the less expensive Motorola Edge. So, yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, I, I I think I got my point across about just not just not not bending over, not not bowing down, not there. We 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 have we have rights as a consumer, and and I just don't. I I think I've I'm I'm beating a dead horse here. So let's move on to the next story. Let me just go through chat real quick just to make sure I didn't miss anyone. Uh, I think I think I have said hi to everybody in here though. Um, Sounds like you guys are just chatting, which is great. Uh, love seeing it. Um, Big House says, Moto Lenovo needs to update my G7 and Moto One Zoom. Big House, why don't you take your G7 and um, and mod it, drop lineage on it. I, I actually have, I'm still trying to find a G. I was actually trying to get uh, a G7 ThinQ. I was about to get the LG G7 One because it has Android One on it, but I it also has the older Snapdragon and it doesn't have... Um, it only has 32 gigs of internal storage. So I was thinking about buying a G7 ThinQ and modding it. I'm just trying to find one at a good price. Uh, that was my little secret. Um, one of my secret phones I was trying to buy. And when I say a good price, I mean, like I'm trying to get one at a, at a, uh, completely low end price, but we'll see if that happens. Uh, okay. Um, Da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm just looking at chat. I'm just seeing if there's anything to, to go down here. Javier says, I'm honestly disappointed in Motorola with their decisions, though. Yeah, Motorola hasn't been the best. Uh, I don't know what happened to them ever since the Moto X Pure and like the very first generation ones that started coming out. Lenovo and uh, VZW, Verizon Wireless are ruining Moto. I agree. Um, Let's see. <laughs> these are these are just words from Moto. Watch the update be nine months late. That's so sad. And like the thing is, I I that that might be the truth, man. <laughs> Who knows? I see Raf in here too. Raf B, how's it going, man? Welcome to the stream. Amen. With what you said about manufacturers should think of longevity to win customer loyalty. This is what Apple is known for. That's so true, and that's such a good way to put it too. You know, we we can talk all day about Apple and we can give them shit for their prices of the phones. And, and I will, cause their phones are really expensive. A lot of their products are really expensive. And, and that's why lately I'm applauding them for like the one, the, I keep thinking, I keep wanting to say one, one plus SE. I can't, the, the iPhone SE for 399 and the iPhone 12 for maybe coming at 649. I have to applaud them for actually trying to be a little more competitive in the price. Um, but yeah, the thing about the products for Apple is like, even though you might be spending a thousand bucks, some of these people will hold on to a phone for four or five years. Hell, my, my, my MacBook's over there <laughs> sitting on the floor, but usually my MacBook's here and I have a five-year-old MacBook and that thing still runs really well. Like it's not the best video editor, but I can still edit my photos and watching videos and just using it for regular web surfing is great, but that's a great point, Raf. And Raf, again, welcome to the stream, man. Appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, real quick, guys, um, 
this is a uh, midpoint here. So here's my little marketing thing <laughs> real quick, guys. If you guys haven't, please feel free to like the video, liking the video gives, uh, I think other users a chance to help me in the algorithm. What I'm saying is hopefully it helps other people find my stream so they can hop in here, uh, talk and chat, commu uh, uh, engage with you guys, all that kind of stuff. So if you guys haven't, please feel free to like the video. If you guys haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I do uh, stream Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. Central, uh, maybe 12.30 p.m. Central, maybe 1 p.m. Central, between 12 and 1 p.m. Central. Uh, so I do that. I do this daily, talk to everybody in chat, say what's up. And then lastly, again, if you guys are in chat right now and you see people with green in their name and you see a little red Chicago star next to their name, that is a badge. And that's because they are a member of um, my channel. And uh, to be a member of my channel, it's really easy. Uh, and you can do it for as little as 99 cents a month. You get a little uh, red Chicago star badge next to your name. You get to use custom emoji. And then you get your name on the intro and outro on every one of my live streams. Uh, Monday through Friday. And then uh, there are different tiers too. So at $5 a month, you can um, get access to my private discord. $10 a month, you get access to my higher production videos before anyone else gets to see them. Uh, all you got to do is click the join button. And if you can't find that, you can go to youtube.com forward slash phone Jerome forward slash join. And um, that's it for my marketing thing here. I will do that one more time at the end of the show. And so that's it. So that's as uh, that's I'm just trying to be as very light spam as I can. By the, by the way, spam is very good. Not 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 the bad spam, but the, the food spam. It's very good, guys. I'm just, uh, I'm not sponsored by spam, but uh, yeah. So, all right. Uh, this article from Android Central, uh, I pulled this up because I actually wanted to get, um, I wanted to get the Pixel Buds. I just, you know, money's been a factor for me lately. So it just, hasn't been a thing, but uh, this article from Android Central is talking about the Google Pixel Buds uh, that got released recently versus the AirPods, the second gen AirPods. So I've had the second gen AirPods and they were pretty good, but I do have the AirPods Pro now and I like those a lot because I like uh, active noise cancellation. So I don't use uh, active noise cancellation as much lately because I've been quarantined at home. And when I go for my walks, I don't turn on a uh, ANC, but I did use active noise cancellation a lot back in my, uh, back in the day. Um, in Chicago, when I take public transportation and I'm on the bus or I'm on the train, I turn on active noise cancellation a lot just to avoid, you know, just people coming in and out of the trains and then just like city traffic and whatever, I usually turn it on then and it's been really useful. And that's the reason I've stuck with it. But, um, I did like my AirPods second gen. I just, and, and I do want to try the pixel buds one day, but, uh, you know, I, I figured we go ahead and we talk about this. So this one's saying which one you should buy. I've heard good things about the Pixel Buds, but then I've heard other people too tell me that it hasn't been the best fit or they're not as comfortable as AirPods. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. So outside of comfort and microphone quality for calls, the Pixel Buds are equal to or better than the AirPods in every way. So this is, I mean, I don't know if it's biased because it's Android Central, but you know, they're, they're saying it's pretty good. The Pixel Buds feature better sound. Uh, and, and if you guys have had both, can you chime in? Do the do the uh, AirBud AirBuds? Do the Pixel Buds have better sound than the the AirPods second gen? Um, USB C for wired charging and a better media control scheme. They work best with an Android phone, but work differently, but work decently well on other devices. The AirPods feature great comfort if they fit your ears, and great mic quality for phone calls. They are great for, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, audiobooks, podcast listening, but are only decent with music and movies. They're perfect for those who own an iPhone, though, thanks to their deep integration. So they're pros. Uh, long battery life, great sound quality, wireless charging case and wire charging, excellent integration with Android devices, good mic quality for calls. This says great mic, great mic for calls and video chats, wireless charging case, excellent comfort. Uh, and then the cons is the sound quality isn't as great. Uh, lightning for wired charging and noise isolation is uh, poor for the AirPods second gen. And then for the Pixel Buds, comfort could be better for long-term use. And I think I think that's what Will said. Uh, Will, yeah, I see Will in here too. Um, Will, can you tell me that uh, as far as comfort 
when you use them long term, didn't you say they weren't as comfortable after a while? I don't know. Um, the AirPods Pro fall out no matter which ear tip I use. So that's the thing. That's for me too. Uh, when I go on a walk, it's okay. Sometimes when I go on a run though, I can feel them getting loose. And when I, when I would go to the gym before we got quarantined, um, they would fall out sometimes when I would either, you know, bend over for weights or whatever. Like sometimes they'd fall out of my ear, which was pretty annoying, pretty annoying. Uh, real quick. I see Forbes tech reviews in here. What up Jerome and stream? What up Forbes tech? Haven't seen you in a bit. Um, right. Have you been in here? I can't remember. Either way, man, glad to see you uh, come in here. Uh, welcome to the stream, man. Welcome to the chat. Okay, uh, let me just kind of go on here. I I'm not going to go through. I'm not going to go too deep into this, but uh, the AirPods have two things going for them, class-leading mics for phone and conference calls. So even on my AirPods Pro, like the, I feel like the mic quality is really good. No one's ever complained. Um, and they've, they've always sounded great to me uh, and great comfort thanks to their one size fits all design. Otherwise, Pixel Buds are equal to, equal to or better than the AirPods in every way, especially if you plan on using them with an Android device. So that's, that's good to hear. I'm glad to see, I'm glad to see that, um, you know, Pixel Buds, there's something out there that'll be decent competition. As mentioned above, the decision is pretty simple. If you need the absolute best mic because you have a ton of phone or conference calls, the AirPods are the better choice. When when they say that, this scares me because they're saying if you need the absolute, like as far as the mic quality goes, is it is it that bad on the, is it that bad on the Pixel Buds? Phone call quality on the Buds aren't bad by any stretch but the AirPods are simply better for taking phone calls. Okay, well, fair enough. Another area where AirPods have the upper hand is in the comfort department, thanks to their one-size-fits-all design. However, they don't feature swappable ear tips or wings, which means that if they don't fit your ear too bad, if they do, they're some of the most comfortable and stable earbuds around. Okay, so they're saying they're comfortable at least over short periods. They have an integrated wing tip that can't be adjusted and ends up pushing against ends up pushing against your ears, getting uncomfortable ev after several hours of use. They, the buds do come with multiple ear tips in the box, which helps with comfort and fit. I'm not going to go through all of this, guys. I just want to see what they're saying in here. One last bit, neither the AirPods or Pixel Buds feature uh, ANC, so no noise cancellation or ambient sound modes. That means you'll be relying on passive isolation and volume to drown out the environment around you. It's notoriously poor on the AirPods due to their open design. The buds lay on your ears versus actually being in your ear, which means it'll basically be impossible to block out noise, even at max volume in louder environments. To wrap things up, the only real reason you want to pick up the AirPods over the Pixel Buds if you absolutely need a better mic for phone calls or video chat. Otherwise, the Pixel Buds are either equal to or better than the AirPods in every other meaningful way. I mean, that's a big statement. The Pixel Buds offer a, sm a similar footprint, same battery life, better sound quality, better media controls, and better integration with your Android phone. That's good to know. I mean, I'm, I'm glad to see that, uh, you know, again, that there's something decent out there. Um, <laughs> yes, it does get uncomfortable. Uh, the OG AirPods are the best for me. Um, Will says here, the case for the Pixel Buds is better than the AirPods, in my opinion, because it's matte, so no scratches. That's a good point, too. Uh, I will I will say I have dropped my AirPods um, Pro case like multiple times already. I'm actually surprised how well that, you know, it hasn't broken or anything like that. Um, <laughs> Grant saying stop overselling them. Oh God. Um, okay guys, let me, <laughs> let's move on here. Let's, so let's actually talk about this. Um, this, this is really interesting. This is something I saw, uh, today on TechCrunch, and this is about the wing. This is a LG phone that has a completely different concept, different design that I haven't seen on any other phone at this point. So the wing is reportedly LG's latest odd dual screen smartphone concept. I'm still trying to figure out how this would work. Like if I had my phone and I'm holding my phone up like this, sorry, I'm like, and then I would have the, I just don't know how the weight would be, but I could see that being a thing. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know how, I don't know if it would look silly on, on the train or the bus, but, uh, 
I don't know. It's, 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 it's a different concept. So it seems like only yesterday we were complaining about the boring uniformity of smartphone designs. In the last couple of years, companies have worked to offer some alternative through dual screen devices, foldables, and a slew of concept form factors, few of which have really gained much traction. Even so, the LG Wing, so it's its code name for now. I don't know. I think the name's kind of cool. <laughs> I like it better than Velvet. Um, offers a strange new alternative to the push for more screen real estate. The likely concept has surfaced through Korean Herald and ET News reports showing a 6.8 inch screen that swivels up horizontally to reveal a square four inch display below. Oh, it's a four inch. Okay. That's so different. Um, that's, I mean, I, I think it's pretty innovative. This is still in the concept leak phase, though it's not entirely without precedent from Camp LG. Notably, the manufacturer released a bunch of swiveling handsets over a decade ago, back in the days when phones still had buttons. While the second screen would function as a keyboard some of the time, the versatility of the display offers interesting supplemental features like editing or viewing supplemental content. The handset would also reportedly feature a processor in the Snapdragon 7 family and a triple camera setup. So, so actually, the way I think about it is imagine. Imagine if I was holding my phone like this, the bottom half, like, like imagine you're watching the stream right now. And then you would have on the top half, you would see me on the stream, but like, you know, in landscape format. And then at the bottom there, you would have streaming chat, right? I, I, and, and that's a, that's a thing now. That's a reality for a lot of people because they watch a lot of live streams or they're on Twitch or they're just on whatever that has live streams on it, Facebook events or stuff on Instagram or whatever. Um, that is a cool way for supplemental content. And uh, I think that is one of the things that I see with, the one benefit I see for having a second display um, or even maybe a foldable phone. I don't know. It's not a bad, it's not a bad idea. While the second screen would function as it, oh, I read that already. Certainly it doesn't seem out of the realm of possibility for LG to try something new. The company has performed its share of experiments in the past, actually getting app developers to come along for the ride on the, or getting, getting app developers to come along for the ride on the other hand is another issue entirely. Yeah. And that's also true is um, who knows, who knows who's going to, you know, stand up and say, yeah, we'll make apps for you. Maybe they won't, but maybe this is something that, again, it's not the, it's different. I like the idea. Um, and it wouldn't be bad, especially if you need a second screen. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I kind of like the idea. I'm not, I'm not big on gimmicky stuff, but I can maybe see a use for it. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. All right. Moving on guys. Let's, uh, let's talk about, um, the Huawei P30. And actually, I think, um, let me scroll up here because I did read through this for a bit. Uh, the Huawei P30, I don't know much about this phone. And actually, somebody in chat asked me about this yesterday. And they asked me, uh, I think it was Y 2019 uh, in my chat, who asked me if I would get a P30 or a Pixel 4a if they were the same price. And I didn't know much about the P30. And, and I said, well, what about Google services? But it looks like you could use Google services on the P30. Um, so this article from Tech Radar is talking about the Huawei P30 Pro deals seem like the perfect option with rapidly dropping prices. One of the world's best smartphones is shedding its price tag. Normally when a new handset comes along, it supersedes the brand's original flagship offering better value, specs, and features. With the, with the Huawei P40 Pro, we're not so sure that's the case. Yes, Huawei P40 Pro deals offer you one of the world's best smartphones in terms of hardware, but when it comes to software, it falls short. With the P40 Pro stripped of all the Google apps and paired with a massive price tag, last year's Huawei P30 Pro feels like the obvious choice. With P30 Pro deals, so you still get all of Google stuff, Google Maps, YouTube, and other restricted apps, but possibly more importantly, the price is far lower. Falling massively in price, there are a wide range of excellent offers on this high-end handset. So you can get a P30 right now for five for 500 bucks, but I went to take a look at it and for $500 it's renewed. So it's not, it's not brand new sealed. It's kind of new. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing renewed is like refurbished. Um, and I, I'm assuming it supports, yeah, it does support, um, 
US bands. So you're able to use it in, in the States, but at 500 bucks for not even a brand new phone, I, I don't know if my money would go for this. Um, I don't know this phone too well. I, I was kind of out of the, the phone game for a bit, but it doesn't, I know it doesn't use uh, a Snapdragon. It uses a Kirin 980. I have no idea what that's similar to as far as Snapdragon series phones. Um, this is the version that has 128 gigs of internal storage and six gigs of RAM, but there are other versions here. So on GSM Arena, right? They're, they're saying that it's upgradable to Android 10, which is nice. Um, it's IP53. Uh, and then you can get eight gigs of RAM, right? At a 64 gig internal storage. So there are different prices, but uh, would I rather get this than a Pixel 4a? I don't know. I don't know how good the cameras are on here. I don't know how well they do, but uh, I just thought I would put that up there. I see that they're dropping in price, but I still think 500 bucks. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about the, the Kieran chips at, as well, or at all. I was hoping that Y was going to be in here because I know he asked about this yesterday and I was going to be like, hey man, what's up? Like I got, I got this stuff. I wanted to talk to you about it, but I, I don't think he's in here today. So, um, but yeah, just thought I would share it. Uh, okay. Let me see what else I have here. Um, yeah, that was the other thing. Okay. This other article from uh, Tech Radar, and I saw a bunch of articles for this today. And this is something that I'll have to um, I'll have to take a look into. Actually, as I see Grant here saying uh, you'll probably like the P30 Pro cameras, Jerome. Man, uh, so everyone, <laughs> I remember when I was putting uh, camera reviews out, everyone kept telling me to get Huawei stuff. Everyone kept talking about how good the cameras were on Huawei. And I just, I haven't had a chance to really look into it. And I just haven't had a chance to just get the money to, to spend on it, but maybe it's something I'll have to take a look at. Um, with the P30 pro, cause I know Grant, you, you own a lot of phones and you've had a good amount and you take a lot of pictures too. So with the P30 pro, what do you think that competes with? Would that compete with the iPhone 11 pro? Or would it even be close? What about night mode? I, I have a lot of questions and I'm curious how good those cameras actually are. Because if, if they're actually pretty good, maybe I can see if I can find a good deal on them and test them out. Um, let me know. Let me know. It, it's something that I'll put. Um, I need to start making notes of all these goddamn phones because everyone keeps recommending phones to me and saying, check this out, check this out. But like, it's just, there's so many to keep up with. But again, I'm a camera guy and I just want to see what the best of the best is out there. So if the P30 Pro might be nice, I'll, I'll take a look. So, okay. Anyway, uh, I'll get back to that. But this article from Tech Radar is talking about um, AirPods Studio release. So I've heard, I saw articles about over-the-ear headphones for Apple and I kind of just mulled over them because I was like, eh, you know, I don't know. I don't need over-the-ear ones, but I've always liked Beats uh, headphones and it's not a, it's not a marketing thing. It's not the marketing thing for it. I think they have a really good design. I've always liked the design of Beats and um, I just never bought them because I just never had a need for them. But uh, then I saw these or at least I saw some pictures for these and I was like, man, th those look kind of cool. <laughs> so, so um, let's talk about it. Uh, this article from Tech Radar is talking about AirPods Studio. Uh, over the ear, Apple headphones could launch very soon. And so, um, okay, so this is a mock up. Uh, we've been anticipating a pair of over ear Apple headphones for a while now, with numerous outlets reporting that uh, the San Cupertino company is planning to release a pair of studio quality cans this year. The headphones, which are tentatively known as the AirPods Studio or the AirPods X, will apparently be the smartest headphones we've ever seen, if rumors uh, of clever ear-detecting sensors are to, be, are to be believed. The AirPods Studio aren't the only new Apple headphones rumored to launch in 2020. Uh, the AirPods Pro Lite will, appar will apparently be an entry-level version of the noise-canceling AirPods Pro. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't read this article. I just, I thought I... I thought there was another picture I saw for this, but we'll, we'll talk about it. So um, while the so-called AirPods 3 are the anticipated follow-up to the original AirPods, which saw their last upgrade in 2019. Right now, everything we know about the AirPods studio from potential release dates to prices are based on rumors and leaks. However, that's not to say we shouldn't lend any cre uh, credence to what we've heard so far. That's what we've compiled this guide. That's why we've compiled this guide to 
to everything we know about the first Apple over ear headphones, as well as all the features we want to see from the Apple AirPods studio. Um, so for a release date as, as soon as June 2020, as part of Apple's WDDC event, this would tie in nicely with the earliest reports of Apple over ear headphones. Okay, I wanna see the pictures. Um, so this saying that a recent tweet from well-respected tech analyst, John Processor, suggest, John Processor suggests new in, <laughs> new in-ear AirPods, perhaps AirPods 3 or AirPods Pro Lite will come before the over-ear Apple AirPods. God, there's so many words here. It's just too much. That means we could be waiting until the latter half of 2020 to see them, perhaps at Apple's annual iPhone launch event in October. So the AirPods Studio may look similar to the Beats Solo Pro. So the AirPods Studio price, 400 bucks, really expensive. Uh, however, processor alleged that the AirPods Studio, they'll be around $50 cheaper than initial reports suggested coming at 350. Either way, we're not expecting the new Apple over-ear headphones to come cheap. I'm, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either. Uh, oh, I see why in here. I just like at the glance why I'm going to talk to you in a second. Processor has also speculated that the Apple over-ear headphones could come in a range of colors. Um, and then Apple AirPods X, the best over-ear headphones, combine slick design, comfort, and portability. Uh, that's why we'd like to see modern conveniences like wireless connectivity, built-in voice assistance, and active noise canceling in the rumored Apple over-ear headphones, and above all else, fantastic sound quality. Uh, better sound quality than the AirPods. Okay, so yeah, actually, this is the picture that I was looking at. I guess this is just a mock-up. I thought this might have been the real one. Oh, God damn it, it's a mock-up. Um, what I liked about this mock-up is this goddamn Apple logo. This is the old school Apple logo. And guys, if you don't, if you, if you guys are a member of, and I'm, I'm like looking at my phone right now, if you guys are a member of my, um, if you guys are a member of my channel, uh, I have that Apple logo there and I just sent like 13 of them in there. I think that's such a cool design. God damn it. I thought that was a real picture when I glance at it, cause I was just going through articles real quick and I'm like, Oh, I would totally buy that if it came with that logo. I just think it's so cool looking, but, um, okay. I, I'll, I'm, I'm done fawning over that logo over ears tend to offer a higher sound quality, uh, than in-ear models anyway. Very true. I used to be a bigger audio tech back in the day, but, um, I, I wouldn't mind having a really nice pair of over the ear headphones, and I know there are a lot of them out there. I used to be real, real big into them. And, you know, but that was back when three and a half millimeter uh, headphones were a thing. And uh, it would be nice to have a really nice pair that were wireless. So um, partly because they have bigger drivers than in-ear models, these larger drivers are able to displace larger volumes of air than smaller counterparts, which in turn creates a more powerful audio performance. According to audio device, these larger drivers tend to reproduce the widest range of frequencies from silky smooth highs to tight, deep bass, providing a richer, more colorful sound stage than in-ear headphones. Um, so classic Apple design, take away the technical aspects of a pair of headphones, and, you're, and you've essentially got a potentially very expensive piece of headgear, and as such, it's important that they look good. We, we know that Apple has a strong dis design aesthetic, they do. Despite initial ridicule, the Apple AirPods have become iconic for their unique design, with lots of true wireless earbud manufacturers since taking inspiration from their long, protruding stems and all white color scheme. I'm not going, this is a long article. Holy shit. I just wanted to share that picture because I thought it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I don't know what to expect. I don't know when any of these are really coming out. And I know there's so many different ones out there, but um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's it. That's all I wanted to share. Let me let me scroll back up here. Um, Apple, should, Apple should bring that back. I really like that logo. That's why when I was making those custom emoji for the membership, I'm like, oh, I'll put the, I'll put the old school Apple one in here. Um, okay, so Grant says here, haven't had a P30 Pro, but from what I've seen, photos are great, including low light. Video doesn't seem to be uh, too great though. That's good to know. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for that input. You know, I mean, I'll still maybe take a look. Maybe it's something I can, I can take a look at. Why says here, uh, hope there's a Poco F2 with a snap 855, uh, and X2 pro with the 768 G. 
yeah oh yeah a poco f2 right not the f2 pro but uh why were you in here when i was talking about the the f2 pro uh at 500 bucks or 540 or whatever but uh i was also why i was also talking about the why uh why <laughs> the huawei p30 pro because i think you were the one that asked me about it and uh i actually wanted to talk about that because it has a lower price point here uh at at 500 bucks but it's a refurbished one um I don't know. I think you're the one that talked to me about it, but maybe I'll message you directly. Um, I did have some questions on it, but uh, I, I can't remember now what I said earlier. So I'm just going to skip that for now. But why? Uh, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Glad, glad you could stop by. Um, why is also saying I had an idea of the Pixel doing an S year, but calling it the Pixel 4P with just uh, perfecting the aspects that Pixel 4 fell, like battery. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. It's just... For me, it's like, why why couldn't you just get it right the first time? <laughs> but yeah, I, I hear you. That's not a bad idea. Uh okay. Oh, okay. This is this is my last article. This is uh this isn't really as oops, that's not what I meant to do. This isn't really as related to phones as anything else. But uh I wanted to share this because um here here's here's a little tidbit about me that you guys might not know, but I love Scrabble. I, I used to play Scrabble when I was a little kid. And, uh, I think that's what of might've, that's what <laughs> I'm here fucking up my vocab. And, uh, I'm saying, but what I'm trying to say is I think Scrabble really helped me growing up as a kid, because I think it helped me with my vocabulary and it just helped me, you know, kind of get my words together. <laughs> but, uh, um, so I used to play words with friends a lot because I thought that was a lot of fun. And then words with friends fucked it up because they made it pay to pay to win. If you guys don't know what pay to win means, that's a that's a thing in the mobile gaming industry or even in just regular games that annoys the shit out of me. And it's where you get an advantage if you pay for something in a game. So words with friends used to be really fun until they started to make it pay to win, where you could pay to get like word hints or pay to like swap your tiles and they the other person won't know like how the fuck is that fair that's not fair and then scrabble came out with their own game and they used to have the classic version like there was it was like just play scrabble and you would be fine like just the regular game and i when people wanted to play words with friends with me i'd say no play scrabble with me because that was just the original game without any cheats or whatever without pay to win shit and then then they changed then EA bought Scrabble and EA fucked it up. EA decided to make that pay to win. And then I was like, well, I'm never playing online games again. And then Scopely bought Scrabble. So a different company bought it out too. And they do the same thing. And the, the thing that sucks, the thing I've noticed about, because I'm really good at Scrabble. It's one of my favorite games because Scrabble has a lot of strategy. The way you, you just don't put words down. You have to like know where you're putting it down. You don't want to, you don't want to open up areas to other people because you don't want to open up triple word scores for, I'm really getting into it, but I really like, I used to play this game as a kid when, when back in the day when my mom and my dad and I would go to the Philippines to meet, to, to visit my dad's side of the family, my grandma, my grandma, my Lola in, in the Philippines, she was, she was big uh, on Scrabble. And she, she had like a great vocab. My mom has a great vocab and they taught me as a kid how to play and how to strategize and where to put the word letter placement. And if I did it wrong, they'd be like, that's why you don't put it there. And so I know I'm kind of getting really into it, but I really enjoy that game as a kid. And I feel like the only way to probably play that game today is have to play it manually because every game manufacturer out there, mobile game manufacturer wants to make everything pay to win. And it sucks. And it's, it, this is also really weird, but I will share this with you guys now. I have an idea for a mobile game. I've had this idea for, for years, probably over a decade. And I haven't been wanting to share that game with people because I want somebody to develop it. I just don't have the money for it. Cause I think it's a great idea for a game and no one's done it yet. And, um, it wouldn't be pay to win. And there would be a leaderboard and just, it's, it's about skill. I think I think the important things about games are skill. That's the reason I play Rocket League. I know I'm talking about something completely out of left field here, but the reason I play Rocket League is because that's a game of skill. And it's a game that like there there's it it forces you to be better. You know, it forces you to be better technically, it forces you to strategize and that's what I like about games. That's why chess is such a great game. Like I suck at chess. I don't play chess, but I, I love the idea of it because it is one of those competitive games that you have to think about and strategize and Scrabble is one of those games. Rocket League is one of those games. And uh, yeah, anyway, so 
This is so out of left field. I just wanted to talk about it. That's why it was my last story. I even forgot I had it here. But um, th this article I just wanted to share because this, this is saying that the new official Scrabble app is slammed for being tacky and ads heavy. So Scrabble Go is what it's called. Um, new official Scrabble app, Scrabble Go, isn't going down well with mobile fans after it replaced the existing official Scrabble app, prompting a storm of protests from fans of the game. Despite I'm one of them. Despite being downloaded more than 10 million times since it launched, the new app made by games company Scopely, which owns the Scrabble franchise, has garnered hundreds of complaints from users who dislike its in-app purchase model, overly vivid colors, and treasure-style reward system. If you guys have played Scrabble Go, it is the most annoying shit ever. It is nonstop, like, in-your-face colors, like, opening these weird treasures, and I'm like, what the fuck is any of this doing with the game? Like, there's no point to it. No point. I do, there, there, is a, there, there is something to be said about, like, customization. That's what I like about Rocket League, but it's not in-your-face. It's not just, like, here's, like, 18 million colors and sound effects and whatever all day, every day. I mean, Rocket League has... A good amount of that, but not to that extreme. If if you've never played Scrabble, go download it, and you you'll understand what I mean about like that shit just popping in your face every two seconds. Um, Scr Scrabble fans are so perturbed by the new game that they've even launched a digital petition. I didn't know this until I saw this article because I I stopped I saw I have it on my phone. I goddamn I don't have my iPhone on me right now, but it's on my iPhone and I play it. And I stopped playing that game because of all of the in-app shit. Sometimes people would beat me at the very like last like four or five rounds. And I'm like, bullshit. I had a 50, 60 point lead. What it happens to what I've noticed in the game is let's say I'm up by 50 points. Then I get all the shit letters. I get all the, le I'll get like four I's and two U's and they're all one point and I can't make any words. And it's so the other guy can catch up because why does anybody want to play with someone when they're getting destroyed? But that's the point of being a better player. That's how you get other people to be better. That's like, that's like bowling, right? That's like playing someone when in bowling and they have the, and we talk, somebody's talked about this in another stream. Oh, this might've been my news, my news org, but that's like when they bring the, the gutters up, they block the gutters so that no matter what, you won't hit a gutter ball. Like, and it's a handicap They're They're putting a handicap, but they're doing it in such a subtle way. Cause it's like, how do I have this 50 point lead? And now I'm losing it because I'm getting shit letters. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just in my head, but I, it's like NBA jam. Do you guys remember the game NBA jam? You could be you could be up by a lot and then they'll eventually the game, the game will have it. So such in a way where the other team will eventually catch up. Maybe not all the time, but usually that's how it happens. Anyway. Uh, I think that's it. I'm not going to go through all of this. So that digital petition has amassed more than 1400 signatures. Um, yeah, it just sucks because I love Scrabble. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I've been playing it since I was a kid, and I can't even play it online because there's no fair version of it out there because everything is pay to win, and it's just bullshit. So, um, okay. <laughs> just <laughs> Will says rage. I know, man. It bothers me. It does. It really does. Um, <laughs> there are things that I complain about that you guys haven't even seen yet. You haven't even seen <laughs> So, um, uh, Hopkins says, Jerome, I thought, uh, scribble is a game. That's what I play in the browser on PC. I'll have to take a look at it. I don't know if I know that one. Um, <laughs> Will says, what's the idea? You keep saying it. No, I don't want to give the idea away. Maybe I'll share with you, but like, I can't, I, I don't, I don't want to give that away. Um, <laughs> Jerome is ending the stream to go play scrabble. <laughs> uh six says uh keeping it raw next time jerome's happy <laughs> uh daniel says screams in pay to win yeah see you guys understand <laughs> jerome is passionate about scrabble um hopkins says i play scrabble on browser and pc okay so that's about scribble six is saying pay to win loot boxes yeah i hate that shit i don't mind loot boxes in a way but don't make it pay to win what I like about rocket league is it's not pay to win. They have microtransactions, so you can buy different wheels for your car or you can paint your car a certain way, but it's all cosmetic. It doesn't make your car faster. It doesn't make you jump higher. Everything stay. It's just for cosmetic purposes and you don't have to spend the money on it. And that's what I like about rocket league. Cause it's still about skill. It's still about who's better. And it's none of this pay to win shit. That that's the, that's the, that's the demise right now of 
gaming is pay to win. It is the most annoying shit in the world because it's no longer about skill. That's like that's like when people give you participation awards at the end of every at the end of every like competitive game. I don't want this fucking participation award. Like yeah, I know I participated in the game and I just lost. Like let me let me like let people learn how to lose. Like that's not a bad thing. That's like that's like saying that that's like saying that nobody should ever say I'm wrong in something. Dude, there's there there has there's something to be said about having some humility, like saying, hey man, like it's okay to be wrong sometimes. Like it's okay for me to sit there and be like, yeah, I made a mistake. I fucked up. Like there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with losing. Dude, people lose all the time. I I I, I probably lose in life all the time. And it's okay. That's why I, that you know what? Perfect example. I and I know I don't even know where this conversation's going right now, but it's like it's like these streams, man. I didn't know where these streams were going to go. I have no, I still have no idea where they're going to go. I'm, I'm doing these streams every day because I told, I told myself that I, I need to be uncomfortable in, in doing things. I need to like put myself in uncomfortable positions and do things that I love to do, even if it might not be successful. I, I don't know when this turned into a motivation thing, but whatever. I, I, I'm talking about goddamn Scrabble and I still have sixes thing up here. I'm sorry. And this should be here and whatever. Okay. Let me, um, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. I'm done. I'm done guys. Uh, I know I'm, I'm, I'm talking way too much guys. I know people, people are probably leaving and that's fine. That's okay. Cause I'm an hour and 10 into it guys real quick before I go. Um, if you guys haven't already, please feel free to like the video. Uh, liking the video helps me in algorithmic way, meaning that hopefully it lets other people find the stream so that, uh, you guys can chat with me. We can talk about stuff. Um, but also finally, if you guys noticed in the chat, if you look at the people with the green names or the red Chicago star next to their name, that's because they are a member of this channel. Um, and uh, you get those you get those benefits being a member of this channel. You get the green in your name, you get the red Chicago star, and you get to use custom emoji. Guys, you can use this awesome Terminator emoji all day if you wanted to. <laughs> But yeah, you could do that for as little as 99 cents a month. You just click the join button. There are different tiers there as well. Or if you just want to support me at 99 cents a month, that's great. I would love to have you as a member. It would be awesome to just, you know, come in here and talk. I guys, I plan to do this for as long as I can. Even if it's even if I just end up being the only guy in here every day, Monday through Friday, I'm just going to keep doing it. Even if I just bitch here talking about Scrabble, then I'll do it. It's my channel. I can do whatever the fuck I want on here. You guys know that already. Anyway, guys, if you can, or if you want to, if you want to support, you do click, you just click the join button. And if you can't find that join button, you can go to youtube.com forward slash phone Jerome forward slash join. I'd love to have you as a member, as a part of the crew, squad, team, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's it. And I've been talking for an hour plus and my throat's really dry and I'm thirsty. <laughs> And so I'm about to call it quits, guys. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I do stream Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. Central. It's now at this point, it's more like 1 p.m. Central, but somewhere between 12 and 1 p.m. Central. So catch me uh, around that time. And uh, I'm just setting up the outro so I can like, you know, segue into it. But guys, I will catch you tomorrow, uh, 12 to 1 p.m. Central, sometime around there. I will see you soon. Uh, Again, thank you guys for joining. Brian, thank you for the super chat. Uh, anyone, all my members, thank you guys so much. Even just people in the stream saying hi and saying what's up. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one, guys. Take it easy.